Hi, Amji. Thank you so much for taking out your time and agreeing to do this. Um, my name is Chirag. I represent the content marketing team here at WebEngage. Um, I've known Amanji for a really long time. He's been with Vigo. Uh, Vigo has been with WebEngage for a really long time. One of our really favorite customers, so to say. Uh, Amanji, for people who are listening to us for the first time, if you could just go ahead, introduce yourself. What do you do at Vigo? And what's your background like? So hi, everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Chirag, for conducting this call. So my name is Amanjeet, as you have heard from Chirag. Um, talking about myself, I've done my engineering from Mumbai University. I started my career with a startup based in Mumbai. And during the COVID period is when I took a risk to move to a travel company that is Vigo. So when I joined Vigo, it was all about, you know, there is nothing happening. And that is where the problem statement was, what more can you do in the span of the next few months or the next few years? Because everything and anything was very uh, unpredictive. So that is where the challenge came in. And talking more about myself, I am more of, um, you know, I'm more of a person who would realize to do a lot of research into uh, many new things which come up. I'm keen to do a lot of research, a lot of reading and a lot of initiatives also. I, in my free time or rather in my weekends, what I do is I do volunteering with Hemkun Foundation. Uh, so when I was in Mumbai, like right now I moved to Bangalore. So when I was in Mumbai, I used to volunteer with them. And I, at the same time, I used to also head the PR department for the Road Track Club. Uh, so more into social activities also. And that is on how I've been so far. And I'm trying to be the same in Bangalore also. Yeah. Nice, sir. So if I understand correctly, you're an engineer. Engineer turned marketer to uh, probably a social service uh, person to a retention 30 under 30 award winner. That journey has been super amazing. How did that transition sort of happen? So uh, when I joined engineering, uh, you know, wo bolta hai na ki mom dad ke paas ek hi option tha, beta ya engineer banega ya doctor. I selected to be an engineer. But then initially, in my first few years, I understood that this is not something that I can do. But I ensured that I attended all my classes, all my lectures. And at the same time, I joined a lot of student council and student committees and or rather you could call them clubs also. So that is when I got more inclined towards marketing. I started doing internships with Internshala and so on to name few. And that is when I went into digital marketing from digital marketing. Uh, I understood there is a lot more into tech also. Since I did my engineering in IT, I started uh, looking into website development also, and then SEO, and then I could get into uh, the digital marketing aspect also. That is where a smaller part, or you could say the bigger idea comes as a CRM. And that, you know, inclined me more towards it. I started working uh, with a startup in Mumbai. I started as a social media person only. And then since it was a startup, I got to work with different domains also, which included branding, which included marketing. I was also heading uh, their on-ground campus ambassador program. And that is when I got moved to data also and in analytics, so CRM. Uh, that is when I found one of my first mentor for CRM. And he guided me with respect to how it works. I started handling, uh, handling CRM that time and helping him out. And yes. Since then, I haven't looked back and here I am in front of you. Agreed, man. You've been doing some amazing job at Vigo and, you know, you're one of those case studies that we proudly present to our future prospects. Like, hey, Vigo's done some really amazing work and things like that. So you were sort of para-dropped into retention marketing. You found your way and somehow you just navigated through it. Yeah. Somebody was to build a very serious career in retention marketing today. How should or how do you recommend one should go about doing that? So retention marketing, I guess everyone today fears it a lot because it's a very risky role. But at the same time, it's very interesting because you get to know a lot of pain points of a user and a lot of good points about the user, like how and where you can, you know, just nudge them. That is where it is. And it's more of understanding your users also. So just take a normal example, DK. If I want to uh, place an order for a biryani today, I know that I can place it with one particular restaurant or another one which is well known. So that is the use case over here if you look at. And multiple people will also order at the same time. 
इट इज देयर वेर यू सी द प्रॉब्लम इज एक के पास ब्रांडिंग है दूसरे के पास ब्रांडिंग नहीं है सो हाउ कैन यू पिच दैट फॉर और हाउ कैन सी आर एम हेल्प ओवर दैट मे बी इट्स एन ई मेल मे बी इट्स अ पुश और मे बी इट्स अ नोटिफिकेशन और मे बी इट्स अ लाइफ एस एम एस दैट यू कैन सेंड अराउंड सो अकॉर्डिंग टू इट वॉन्स एंगेज दम देन कम्स दी लेटर पार्ट विच इज दिटेंशन डिटेंशन इज वॉट आफ्टर सेल सर्विस राइट बिरयानी घर पे आ गई है अब मुझे खाना तो मैंने खा लिया अब रेटिंग्स चाहिए so once the rating is in then you start retaining the user again giving him vouchers or giving him discounts so it's not just about fearing for it it's more about retaining your users with respect to different strategies that you can come up with and that is how it can be way more simpler and not very difficult if you ask me fair enough so you mentioned right it's very risky at the same time it's really rewarding yeah if you could go back in time and teach your younger self something that you learned very late on your career what would that be oh um so i understood that there were certain things which can be implemented for example there are um, resources which are already available online okay and there are certain resources which are in house also ready it's just that i couldn't figure my way out or how could i you know get my requirements done so first of all you need to make sure do you have all your resources around you yes or no if you have them good if you don't have them you start looking for them so i remember i had to spend a lot of time figuring out if i could do a particular task right away or how long would that take i started looking out for tools for a third party tools also which obviously took a lot of time and the entire strategy plan or whatever uh, the goal was for me for that particular quarter it just got delayed so when i got to know that i could do that in house i was like oh why did i do that so that is where you know you need to check your resources first and then you should go out yeah so our ceo always tells us right don't try to solve problems somebody is already solved for it just find the solution where it is so having said that right um again as a retention marketer as a professional you face a lot of challenges today it could be people processes personal right uh what is that one thing that you would want to change in the style of working maybe with you with the people around you with the processes what is that one thing that you would change that you know sort of skyrockets you from where you are to another set of your career so here what i believe is you need time and you need to be patient enough because if you say you need results or you need instant results it won't happen within one night okay but yeah there are studies also or there are campaigns also which would give you a skyrocket insights also but then after a certain point that will only limit you for a certain period of time right if you ask me i need a good insights or a good number by the end of the day i could deliver you right now because i know which uh, you know which pain point of the user i should push right now or which a uh, user or the which segment will help me with that particular ctr if i need to increase it right so that is something which i can do it easily but then ultimately you need to look at other aspects also fair so enough so is the key agreed man agreed so one of the things that i've always believed in in my career is people keep looking for growth hacks right but the biggest growth hack is getting your basics in place true right people are running behind that one viral piece of content that will give them the next boost get your basics in place have a normal engagement in place first get your basics right then probably you can look at you know growth hacks so with that said uh, i come to the next leg of the segment where uh, i will ask you some questions and uh, you sort of answer if you've done that or you've never done that and uh, probably a little bit of justification around your answer as well right okay. i call the segment never have i ever now usually we do this in person where we pop a couple of beers and you know we're uh, playing a nice game around it but since we're doing it online uh, we'll just raise our hands i have or i have right so question number 1 never have i ever created a failed campaign and blamed it on others i have never <laughs> oh really so i yeah. do it all the time right i if if there is a social media post that not that's not performing i'll blame it on the creative team Hey, your creators are not nice. I'll, I'll I'll just do that, right? You've never done that, seriously? So what we what I've been doing or what the entire team does over here is even if there is a mistake, we agree to it. That's one. And mm-hmm. second is we have streamlined our process in such a way that the chances of errors is zero point zero zero one right now. 
Wow. Wow. So we'll have this conversation later on offline. I want to understand what magic you guys are doing because I mean, 0.01% is like really beautiful. Uh, next question. Never have I ever sent a campaign with failed personalization tags. I have sent. You have, right? We all have. We all have. So again, I mean, you if you if you want to throw some light into what happened after that, after that campaign was sent. So over here, what actually the issue was with respect to your user data, actually, sometimes what happens is your user data is not structured very well. So instead of a user, uh, if I say, hi, Amanjeet, the campaign went like, hi, and a big space, which is like, oh. not really good when you see it on your notifications. The other uh, issue, what we found out was, hi, Amanjeet at Vigo.com because the name was replaced by the email. So, you know, that is how the data was not really structured well. Mm -hmm. So such kind of issues, they do happen. Yeah. Nice. So never have I ever tweaked my reports to save my ass. I have never. Never. Not even like 0.01%. No, 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 no. Because thankfully, or I could say the level of things that we are doing as of now, the conversions are so very beautiful. Thanks to WebEngage also. because. Everything is pretty much in place. So we never required or I never required to just tweak something. So, yeah. <laughs> so, see, again, with WebEngage, things are pretty much black and white, right? It's all there yeah. on the dashboard. You can't really tweak anything. True. Exactly. That's the reason. That's the point, right? Uh, uh, never have I ever sprayed a campaign to achieve my month-end numbers. Um, Not really. No? No. So... Oh. Uh, what we follow here is more of uh, like obviously conversions at the end of the day is what you require but then at some point you know you have certain benchmarks and you need to meet them and then that is when you scale them up so we follow that process here so chasing conversions is not really that we look at yes because we prioritize our users first and then You're probably one of those two percent users who sits on the never have I done this. <laughs> this. Um, and last one, never have I ever picked a bone with my manager because he asked me to run a stupid campaign that did not make sense to you. Uh, I like to pass this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I'll I'll answer this uh, on my behalf. We I do that all the time. Uh, so I report into Ankur directly and we have this fight almost every day. He'll come up with an idea, I'll, I'll shoot him down. I'll come up with an idea, he'll shoot me down. And that's where we think that, you know, we as a team, we grow because we believe in that 10th man strategy. You know, if you've yeah. seen World War Z, that 10th man, when nine people in a room agree to something, it's the responsibility of the 10th man to agree and believe that they are wrong and try investigating in that direction. So that's how we do. That's how we run our campaigns. And, you know, we've seen a lot of tremendous success there. So with that said, uh, thank you so much, Amanjeet, for taking out your time, uh, agreeing to do this, speaking with us. I look forward to connecting with you offline someday really soon. Uh, and I'll, I'll again, I'll connect with you offline on that 0.01% margin of error that you spoke about. Really sure, sure. more about it. Thank you so much for your time, Amanjeet. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.